Yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, WD Michael. And in today's YouTube video, we're going to be talking about the brand new seven star raid battle event happening in the Pokemon Scarlet Violet video games tonight. Tonight kicks off another event, and this one is going to be featuring another Pokemon starter, and this one is going to be the water Pokemon Samurott. Now, Samurott is going to be one of the, I think, hardest raid battle events that we're going to be having as far as the starters goes, and that is due to its actual Terra type. They gave it a bug Terra type, and with bug, it does have some weaknesses. Unfortunately, Samurott has a lot of coverage moves that covers every one of those weaknesses. So this is definitely one that I wanted to make sure I made a guide video for so we could talk about Samurott, what it's probably going to end up having, so we can really try to figure out some of the best possible Pokemon to bring to this raid event so that you don't waste much time and you can actually get it on the first weekend. So with all of these builds, they are, we don't know exactly what the Samurai is. We don't know the exact best build, but this will at least give us a really nice base platform to get an idea of what we should be bringing. So that when the weekend does kick off, we have a good head start on it. We're, you know, we might have to do some changes and that is okay because I will definitely post another video after the Samurai raid is over. We've beaten it on stream. And then I will post a video on here of some maybe some corrections or possibly the best build for it at that point. Now with this Pokemon Terra Raid battle event, there will also be a couple of one shots that were brought up in my Twitch stream, which will be brought up on another video later on. So keep your eyes posted for that one here shortly. Without further ado, let's get into these 10 raid builds that I have built for you over this last week and get you started on the Samurai Raid Guide. Woo! So if we're gonna be talking about actual raid build guides for this Terra Raid event, we need to understand the Pokemon we're gonna be fighting, or at least get an idea of what it might possibly bring to the table so we can make some solid builds to counter it. So Samurott is the formidable Pokemon. It is a single water type starter from generation five, and it is gonna be given a bug terrestrialization, which covers some of its weaknesses and also um, really, really gives it some really nice stab moves like Megahorn. Megahorn's going to be an absolutely brutal move to be going up against in these terror raid events it does a massive amount of damage so if you bring the wrong pokemon you are going to pay for it dearly mark my words this mega horn is going to crush people now you also might get razor shell which is an awesome water type move that drops the defense of a pokemon down by one we also have sacred sword which is a, a fantastic fighting type move that can do a ton of damage it also does not check defensive boosts so it is going to do that same amount of damage every single time it does not matter if you are plus six in your defense so keep your eye out for that one night slash another fantastic dark move that this pokemon ends up getting which covers some more weaknesses for itself now as far as some like other moves swords dance is going to be one of those ones where we saw in the decidui raid where swords dance ended up being a massive massive issue you had to play the raid right or if you didn't you pop that shield, Decidueye went plus two, and it nullified all of your stats, and it started just absolutely slaughtering teams in that raid battle. So we'd have to understand that it does get Swords Dance. Will it use it? We don't know, but it's there, and it might. The other really big one that we really haven't fought a lot in Terra Raid of Battles yet, especially not in a seven star, is Focus Energy. Focus Energy might absolutely just wreak havoc, and that was the reason why at the beginning of the video I said this might be one of the hardest raid battle events yet and there's two reasons one is because that it is a bug terrestrialization and most of the moves that samurai gets will counter a lot of those those weaknesses in rock flying as well as fire so it's going to be definitely really hard to bring pokemon that's just really counter that without taking a bunch of damage and then on top of it, you have focus energy focus energy means he's going to be critting like crazy if you're not paying attention so that's why in most of these builds especially in the support pokemon we do have taunt Taunt's going to be huge because we definitely don't want to be eating a ton of crits from this Pokemon in the raid battle event. It does also get Screech, which means you can be dropping defense down from your Razor Shell as well as from Screech. So defensive drops are going to possibly be pretty prevalent. The other big issue that you have that covers one of the big kind of like typings that everybody was really hoping to bring was flying. Um, Samrod has a really high special attack stat, and if it ends up bringing ice... Um, ice beam to cover up that flying weakness it's going to cause a lot of destruction so uh yeah this pokemon has massive massive move pool that definitely helps out a lot and its stats are not terrible so i mean honestly this might be one of the top two or three hardest seven star raid battles that we've had yet this one could be a real struggle um so we've got a couple of pokemon that i think are gonna do really well in this raid battle event 
Corviknight with its mirror armor is gonna definitely make sure that you're not taking a lot of stat drops so you can continue doing what you're doing. It's also really bulky. It's got a good typing on it. Quagsire can soak up water moves, which Samurai is more than likely gonna be using, as well as has a lot of abilities and moves that help it out in the raid battle event with dropping stats and stuff like that. Dragonite's an interesting one where it doesn't have some really awesome moves uh, specifically to do a ton of damage, but there's a couple of ways that I we found that you can kind of finesse it to actually end up working in this raid battle event that I think, again, don't mark my words. It could be terrible. We don't know the build yet, but at least it gives us an idea of maybe, who knows, maybe Dragonite's going to be useful. We'll talk about it. Uh, another big one is going to be Cloyster. Cloyster has a just monstrous defensive stat and has some things that it can do to definitely help out with the raid event. So this one could be another fun one to use in this one, uh, depending on the actual moves that the Samurai gets. Toxapex is another fantastic one with a massive defensive stat. It also gets a lot of really cool moves that can definitely help in supporting some of these other poison attackers that we built in these raid battle guides. Um, so Toxapex can be a really cool supported Pokemon in this battle event. And then another really cool one was Toxicroak. I wasn't really expecting Toxicroak to be this big, massive damage dealing Pokemon in this raid battle event, but it is definitely one of our top tier kind of damaging Pokemon for the raid and one that I'm pretty excited to talk about. So we've got a couple of builds. There's actually more than what's on the screen here. So we'll go through all of them now, but we have at the moment 10 builds to go through. So we'll start off with the first one that I built, which was Corviknight. So Corviknight was one of the first kind of Pokemon that I ended up building with. I felt like it had some of the better, um, specifically typings when i was going through it and kind of figuring out like what typings was going to be or were going to be a solid typing to go against in this raid battle event Corviknight definitely had some of those ones specifically with the flying typing as well as the steel typing it's going to definitely mitigate some of the damage this not take a bunch of super effective damage so um being as it's a bulky pokemon that is also flying it could uh you know potentially even be immune to one of the earth moves that the same route gets so Corviknight could definitely be a really really good one um and it also has some options of being kind of more of a supportive pokemon or being a little bit more on the damage side um so if we're going to be going more on the like supportive side i think that the light clay with reflect taunt Drillplek, and screech are definitely a really really good move set because you're able to get a little bit of damage mitigation up while also being able to help your team taunt it so no more focus energy as well as get some drill pecs so you can actually get some damage into this pokemon now if you wanted to go a little bit more on the heavy attack side you could change the stats from 252 defense over to two attack and kind of uh push your attack stat up a little bit as well as throw on a different move like either a shell bell or a sharp beak so that you can get some more damage out of your drill pecs and or some health recovery if you take the shell bell now some other really good moves are fake tears this again this depends on your actual grouping that you're playing with if you've got a lot of special attacking pokemon you drop the special defense down take fake tears if you don't you need to drop the defense or you're alone then take screech uh if you need to get some hp recovery if you're struggling with uh, the hp and you feel like you're dying before you're able to get set up and do your stuff uh roost is another fantastic move that you can use to get your hp back and then bulk up bulk up is another one, one of those ones where it is a little bit slower because you're only going up one stat each but you are up upping your defense and your attack so it's definitely helpful but it is a little bit slower in getting you up to that point um so definitely usable i feel like corvinite has some really awesome usage in this raid event and could definitely be a nice just bulky kind of a a beast to to start off so definitely a really good pokemon to talk about um the next one that i want to go ahead and get into is one of the ice pokemon that has a massive massive defensive stat and that is going to be cloister kicking off number two is gonna be cloister just a massive wall of a pokemon the defensive stat is just off the charts it's a, it's definitely gonna mitigate a lot of damage from this terror raid event but also not taking a lot of super effective damage as well so definitely a really cool kind of a helpful supportive pokemon for this raid event now with this one i believe that your uh your ability shell armor is gonna be pretty much the same thing you're gonna get with samurai but it's gonna definitely help you not take critical hits from the samurai so uh, being as we might have focus energy and stuff like that you might be taking some crits and just being able to have a pokemon that just isn't ever going to take one could definitely be really helpful um, now you do have the option of getting um, some moves like snowscape so you can change the weather so samurai ends up finding a way to get a water um or, or end up you somebody brings a pelipper or the rain or the weather gets changed to rain you have an option of changing it back to something that doesn't help the raid boss and bring it to something that might actually help you. So if you do bring in hay or snow, um, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna boost your defense of your Pokemon. And then you also have the option of getting other moves like Aurora Veil or things like that that other Pokemon might use, which we'll talk about next in Avalug. But the Snowscape can actually definitely be helpful. And again, it's all circumstantial as far as how the actual raid event goes. But 
it's definitely there now some other things you can get that could definitely be helpful in the raid is going to be helping hand boost some attack damage from some of your attacking pokemon you do get life due so you get a nice free healing move out of that so you don't have to waste some of your cheers and then chilling water is always fantastic we've been using it a lot in the raid events but it's basically just a quick one hit and it drops the attack stat by one some other uh notable pokemon moves that you can end up getting are going to be iron defense iron defense will boost your defense up by two could be helpful and then ice beam if you want a little bit more damage out of your cloister a stab move uh, in ice beam could give you a little bit more damage unfortunately cloister just doesn't have a really high special attack so even if it is a stab move it is also not super effective so it's not really going to be doing a whole lot so i didn't really add it into the main raid build because i just don't think it's going to be super useful but again it's there in case you want it um now with this one i would 100 percent just build it 252 hp 252 defense and four special attack the reason being is you're not a damage dealer you are definitely there for support so make sure that you're there as long as possible um so with that that is kind of like the support ice pokemon or one of the first kind of support pokemon we built um, what i want to get into now is going to be the third pokemon build and that is going to be avalug now avalug we try to build a little bit more of like a if you were playing with a couple of other ice pokemon like cloister and stuff like that where you can have an attacking pokemon and so here is our avalug build for the samurai raid all right so here's avalug now the avalug was kind of my like okay so it's got a high defense so that the ice typing is not really the greatest as far as just in case samurai gets sacred sword i would just i I'll be honest, if it gets Sacred Sword, I probably wouldn't be bringing Avalug too much. Just due to the fact that it's just going to do a lot of damage to it. And you really don't want to bring a Pokemon that's going to take super effective damage if you don't have to. But if it doesn't get Sacred Sword, I mean, Avalug is free at that point. Um, it should be a really awesome Pokemon to use. Um, you also have the access to Snowscape. You do get Stone Edge, which is a nice big rock type move that's going to be super effective. You're not going to be critting because it's going to have Shell Armor. But again, it's still a nice move. And if you put on Wide Lens, you're going to be missing or... Uh, upping that chance where you're not going to be missing that move so could definitely be really helpful uh one of the other big ones that i wanted with avalog was specifically that it actually has aurora veil so if you're able to get snowscape up you're able to just basically cut that cut in half damage from all attacks so even if it gets ice beam if the samurai gets ice beam or if it gets a uh, physical move like sacred sword you're going to be able to kind of like mitigate both sets of damage instead of having a reflect and a light screen you know aurora veil covers both of them so definitely not a bad move to have i don't think um, another big one that I think could definitely be helpful with Avalog is just Curse. You do lose some speed, but you do gain some defense and attack, and it could definitely be super helpful um, if you're trying to drop some big stone edges out with this Pokemon. So, it could be a fun one. It also could be a massive fail. We won't know yet until we find out the actual move pool, but it was a fun one to build, so why not? <laughs> um, so, the next one we'll hop into is going to be another support Pokemon, and this is going to be... Quagsire. I thought Quagsire was pretty cool, and I definitely wanted to build with him because he has a really cool ability. Let's check it out now. All right, so Quagsire is going to be one of those kind of goofier ones that might be not a lot of people end up building with. The only reason is because Megahorn might do a little bit of extra damage to this one. He might not take the Megahorn super well, so just kind of bear that in mind. Um, other than that, he's got some really cool abilities and some definitely some really nice supportive moves that we look for when we're looking at supportive Pokemon. So I definitely feel like he should get a mention um just in case he does end up working because if he does work then it would be definitely really cool to bring him um now with quagsire you do get the water absorbability so you aren't you are basically going to be immune to the water type attacks from samurai so that's definitely really helpful um anytime you're just immune to an attack from the pokemon it, it's massive so um definitely could be a really nice just utility to have on the field as far as supportive pokemon you get those leftovers you sit on the field for a long time and you just help your team basically is what this pokemon is meant for uh chilling water dropped his attack stats down acid spray dropped the special defense down um now really this is going to be one of those pokemon where it i feel like quagsire would definitely be really helpful with a group of special attacking pokemon so like if you are going to bring a pokemon that's a heavy attacker so like say Coridon or whatever or a dragonite i don't think that it's going to go quite as well with the quagsire just due to the fact that quagsire is going to be able to support a defensive attacking pokemon it definitely fits more in the role of uh supporting a special attacking pokemon due to the fact that it has acid spray acid spray is amazing so chilling water acid spray helping hand and then recover a just a super awesome special attack support pokemon um and i think one of the better ones that it because that it's going to end up going with is going to be dragalgy dragalgy kind of came out as one of those kind of top tier pokemon for this raid battle event just due to the fact of its typing it's not going to take a lot of damage 
and with its ability adaptability it's going to do a ton a ton of damage so i think that having a quagsire with a dragalgy could definitely be a really solid combo and make sure you do a ton of damage to this this samurai so um some other moves that might be definitely helpful are mud slap mist and snowscape snowscape we just put on there just in case maybe the rain does go up and you want to get it find a way to get rid of it mist is a great way to stop um your pokemon from taking any sort of um neg or drops in their stats for five turns so it could be definitely helpful if the same routes dropping people's stats left and right and then mudslap mudslap's a really good one just because you can drop the accuracy of the same route down and just not take any damage from it so uh definitely all usable then i said this is a support pokemon so we're looking at hp defense and a little bit of special defense for him um but yeah so with that we'll get into the next build which is going to be the dragalgy all right so now we've got one of our big big damage dealing pokemon um in this samurai raid battle and it's one of the pokemon that actually does have a super effective move into the samurai but with the way that it's set up and its moves and its ability it can definitely pump out a ton of damage if supported in the right way um so dragalgy um, having the adaptability definitely helps it out a ton. Now, Dragalgy already has a really high special attack stat. It's a really nice Pokemon for dumping out some, some poison damage. Now, when you give it adaptability, you go from having a stab. So the stab for its nor or for its poison type moves are going to be 1.5. But when you add adaptability to it, it actually goes up to two. So you get a really big boost in your uh, stab moves. So like poison, so your Venoshock, your Sludge Bombs are just gonna be hitting that much harder. Now you pair that with a poison barb, you're just going to just be boosting your poison damage to just an insane amount. Um, so definitely a really cool Pokemon to end up being used. Now, if you pair it with like an acid spray, you start dropping its special defense of the Samurai down to negative six. And, um, you know, this Pokemon's going to do a ton of damage. So definitely a really fun one to bring. I think this one will definitely be um, one of the higher end kind of damage dealers for this raid just due to the fact of of its ability and stuff like that now on the other side of it depending on samurott's moves and stuff like that dragalgy could definitely have a big problem so um one of those was ice beam so uh if it doesn't end up getting out ice beam dragalgy is gonna be in a little bit of a, a bad position so that is why in the other items we've got the assault vest it could definitely help out in making sure that you don't take a lot of damage from an ice beam um shell bell could definitely be really helpful as well because you're gonna be doing a lot of damage you could definitely return a lot of that damage back to you life board might be all right uh, but as far as this move pool goes it definitely gets some really cool moves so chilling water acid spray great for support but then you get sludge bomb and venoshock so if the pokemon is poisoned venoshock's gonna do twice as much damage and then you also have sludge bomb so now you take a double damage venoshock from an adaptability and a poison barb dragalgy and it's it's not gonna be fun so definitely a big damage dealer we did split out the evs a little bit so that we can still get a little bit of defense while also getting some of our special attack in to make sure we're still pumping out a good deal of damage um and pair that with the modest nature and this is going to be a powerhouse in the samurai raids and i think it would pair really well with pokemon like quagsire toxapex would be really really good pairs to support this one and so what we'll do now is we'll talk about toxapex another awesome supportive pokemon for the samurai raid all right, so now we've got Toxapex, which I think is going to be one of the other really big supportive Pokemon, especially when you pair it with a Pokemon like Dragalgy or Toxicroak. I think the Toxapex has a really solid position in this raid as a just a nice, solid supporter wall Pokemon. Uh, now we talked about with the Dragalgy having Venoshock. If it's po if the Samurott's poisoned, you're going to do double damage to Venoshock. Now Toxapex is definitely going to be one of those ones that's going to help you and make sure that Samurott stays poisoned. Um, due to the fact you've got things like baneful bunker um you have uh, sludge bomb i mean this pokemon is just going to be an absolute menace and it's definitely going to stay on the field for a while so it could definitely be really helpful um now when you pair it with like black sludge leftovers gives you even more recovery so you're staying on the field longer now if you want to put the poison barb on there and go more of like a vino shock sludge bomb kind of acid spray build you can definitely try to boost it up a little bit and go more of a special attacking tox specs try to do a little more damage i just think the tox specs fits much better in a supportive role and kind of just helping your real big damage dealers like dragalgy and stuff like that do some big damage so tox specs really cool man i like this one a lot specifically with baneful bunker because the moment you use it and samurai attacks you it is going to get poison so you get that just kind of guaranteed poison that'll definitely be helpful as well as just not dying because you're protecting um now with this one i think 
the other really good Pokemon that would go well with Toxapex is going to be Toxicroak. And that is because it is going to be another poison Pokemon, but Toxicroak is going to be a little bit different than Dragalge because we do have a way of giving it some, kind of like a stab move that is also super effective. Um, unlike Dragalge where it was just a massive damage dealer, Toxicroak, we can find a way to actually make it have a stab move. So let's hop into Toxicroak next and talk about it. All right, so Toxicroak was one of those ones that kind of just was like, okay, how are we gonna build this one? How are we gonna get it to do damage? Because when I first was building, I was like, okay, I can make this a supportive Pokemon. It's definitely not a problem. Problem I was having is I was having a ton of supportive Pokemon in this raid battle guide video. I didn't have a lot of attacking Pokemon. So I pivoted and I started working on making this a more of an attacking Pokemon. And I think we ended up finding a pretty decent build for it. Now with Toxicroak, you definitely have the dry skin ability, which means that any water moves that hit it are going to end up healing you. So that is an extra bonus. Anytime you get some recovery, give it a modest nature and split its EVs into a 124 defense, 132 special attack. So we can get a little bit of boost while also having some little bit of uh, actual resilience to some of that damage. Now with its moveset, there's some pretty cool moves that it gets that can definitely help out in the raid. One of those being Nasty Plot, you up your special attack by two every time. It's great, very quick because you only need three turns. Um, Taunt to make sure you're not getting those focus energies out. Acid Spray to drop the special defense. So you're upping your special attack, you can drop their special defense. And then the big one is going to be Terra Blast. Now Terra Blast, if you match it with a Flying Toxic Hook, will end up then giving you a Flying Stab Terra Blast into a Bug Samurott. That also gives you an immunity to ground moves, which the Samurott does possibly gonna get with Drill Run. So definitely feels like a really nice change up from where Toxic Hook was to kind of bump it up in the air and give it a stab move while also giving it another immunity. So definitely seems like it could do a ton of damage in this one if it's got the right support. If you want some other moves, Sludge Bomb could definitely be really nice, especially in the beginning if you wanna get to some nice chip damage. Chilling Water to drop the attack and then also Mud Slap to drop the accuracy. So it's definitely got some cool moves. It's definitely got the ability to pump out some damage and uh, I think would be another really good damaging Pokemon in this raid. Um, so with that, uh, we've talked about a lot of our poison Pokemon. Now let's kind of get into some of our dragon Pokemon. Now we had some flying dragon Pokemon that kind of came up that felt like they would do really good in this raid battle. So let's kick it off with Dragonite. Okay, so Dragonite was one of those kind of weirder, weird Pokemon where it was like, is it gonna do well? Is it gonna have some struggles just due to the fact that like it's a dragon Pokemon and some of its moves aren't super like, doesn't want to do a ton of damage into bug pokemon it's got some moves but it was just it's, it was a weird one so it took a little bit of extra work to get this one going but one way we thought this might be really cool is just if you threw a fling on it and then you gave it a flame orb now if you fling on turn one and you give the samurott the flame orb you now have a samurott that's sitting there holding a flame orb and is going to keep getting burned so you're going to actually give your dragonite a way to mitigate damage to your team um while also having a damage dealing dragonite which i thought was kind of cool to be honest um multi-scale on it also is going to make it so you're not going to be taking a ton of damage on that turn one anyway so honestly i feel like dragonite might not be too bad it, I, honestly it still could probably take a ton of damage especially if it has ice beam but overall it seemed like it was a, a decent pokemon like we can make it work now with this actual moveset we've got aerialized terra blast because we're going fly uh flying terra gives it an even a larger kind of a stab move in that terror blast we also got dragon dance so we can up our speed and our attack so that's always really helpful and um if we wanted another move we wanted a little bit more recovery we could always go roost um if, especially if we didn't want to go with the fling flame orb you could throw on a shell bell or a uh the sharp beak and you could get rid of the fling and put on a roost and you have another awesome pokemon as well so um, yeah, I think Dragonite will, will definitely be useful. Will it be the best? Probably not, but it could definitely be utilized and, and help some people get this raid done with. Um, another one that I was building with was Noivern, another dragon flying Pokemon. So let's hop into that one. All right, and bring up the final dragon flying Pokemon is going to be Noivern. Now Noivern has, uh, is a little bit different than Dragonite. It's not an attack heavy Pokemon. It's actually more of a special attack heavy Pokemon and has some decent support moves while also being able to pump out a little bit of damage. So uh, definitely one that I think could be utilized. Again, is it going to be the best one in this raid event? Probably not. Uh, will it be able to be utilized and actually be able to like get you through the raid? Probably. Uh, now, the ability Infiltrator probably isn't going to help you out. With Noivorn, it was one of those Pokemon where its ability was one of the ones where its abilities don't really help much in this raid. Uh, now, if you give it a Shell Bell and you give it something like Air Slash, Screech, Dragon Dance, and Taunt, 
you definitely now have a pokemon that could help out your team if you got some defensive attacking pokemon as well as just overall helping yourself pump out a little bit of damage taunt's always fantastic man i really think that at least one of the pokemon in the raid have to have taunt and Noivern was another one, another, blah, 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 blah. another one of those ones that ends up getting taunt and could definitely help out in the raid. It also gets Roost, Terra Blast. Um, so yeah, definitely helpful. I definitely wouldn't say this would be my number one choice, but I would definitely bring this over some other Pokemon. So uh, solid option. Now, finally, for our final build for this raid event, we have one that my buddy Adi Girna brought up, which is going to be Gastrodon. All right, so we have our final Pokemon. Gastron is another one of those supporting Pokemon that could definitely be super helpful in the raid. Biggest reason is because it has Storm Drain. Now, Storm Drain basically means it is going to suck all of those water moves into itself, target itself, and also gains water immunity. And anytime it gets hit with a water move, it goes up by one special attack. So you basically cut off a big tool set of this Samurott and then give your um, your Gastron a free special attack boost anytime one goes off. So really, really helpful. Gastron isn't one of the biggest, bulkiest Pokemon. So I think where it falls short is that it might take a little bit of extra damage in this raid and it might not be as helpful. In order to help that and kind of its lower kind of like defensive stats, I think Acid Armor is going to be really good. You end up boosting those so you're not going to be just getting rocked right off the bat. Uh, recover always nice to have a little bit of hqb recover mud slap and chilling water mud slap is just going to be dropping the other pokemon's accuracy chilling water drop their attack stat so you have this just nice kind of bulky um water you know it it gets that a water immunity it helps your pokemon in the raid and you're just kind of just there to support you're just an annoying slug which is great that's what gastron is meant to be for it's just meant to be a a nice supportive pokemon but if you end up getting a bunch of storm drain per procs you might end up start pumping out a little bit of damage. That's why I started putting some of the other moves over there. Like Helping Hand would be really helpful if you just want to help support another attacking Pokemon. If you're getting a bunch of Storm Drains, Ancient Power might not be too bad. And then Mist as well. Another one of those ones we've talked about where you can just stop your Pokemon on the field from getting any sort of negative stat drop. So always, always helpful. With Eevee Sprite, this is definitely one of those ones we want to go bulky. We want to be support. We don't want to dive. And with Storm Drain and giving us special uh, attack boost, we don't really need to put anything in our special attack. So I felt like just going really nice, bulky support Pokemon was going to be the best. But that will round out our 10 raid builds for the Samurott raid event happening here. Thank you all so much for coming and checking out all my raid builds for the Samurott seven star terror raid event happening here later tonight. Now with that, I will be taking a bunch of these Pokemon that I have built and I'll be going live on my Twitch stream tonight to take out the Samurott raids for myself and then also for the community. So if anybody, if you're struggling with the Samurott raid or if you just want some people to game with and hang out while the Samurott raid is live, feel free to come over to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash WDMichael where I will be live at around 9 p.m. CST throughout the night doing raids with people. So definitely come on by, hang out. I will more than likely also have some spare Pokemon available for this raid event so that you will be able to have something to come in and be able to take it out yourself. Um, and again, thank you so, so much. In the comments down below, if you end up using one of my raid builds for this raid, let me know. I would be super excited to know about how these raid builds are actually being utilized. If they are being utilized, and if there's any that didn't work, let me know as well. I would love to just get better at building raid builds for the Pokemon raid events. So and I'm not gonna be able to do that without getting some feedback. So good or bad, let me know. I would love to absolutely hear about it. And again, make sure you come on by to the Twitch channel so you can come and hang out with me while we are live doing them with the community. Hope you have a fantastic day. Keep your eyes posted because there will possibly be a one shot or a, yeah, a one-shot Pokemon guide coming out for the Samurott Raids. During our last Twitch stream where we were building a lot of these, we actually had a couple of one-shot possibilities come up onto the end of the Twitch chat from one of our viewers named Shiny Eevee. So we will be talking about that in a later video here coming up before the actual Samurott Raids go out. So eh, probably in a couple hours or so. Um, so keep your eyes open for that one. But other than that, hope you have a fantastic day out in Paldea Trainers. Thank you all so much for coming out to the video and supporting me. Have a fantastic one and peace out.